Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So uh, thanks for the introduction and about the name. Yeah. So um, then, just briefly as a second, this is about scalable, flexible point cloud processing. Um, I'll uh, I'll touch on the motivation of that a little bit, but this comes from the the Ecolider project, um, which was about species distribution and and using uh, lidar data in that context, and uh, somewhere along the line we were talking about birds and using LiDAR and the name, well, a chicken is a bird, it kind of came up and it kind of stuck. So this is why it's called that. Um, this was uh, run with the University of Amsterdam and the Institute for Biodiversity and Ecosystem um, uh, Studies. Uh, the PI was uh, Daniel Kissling and uh, basically I worked on this together with uh, Francesco and O who are also here and Christian Meyer who was um, also a research software engineer at the Institute. But wh why point cloud processing um, in the first place in, in this context? And um, point clouds are actually gaining um, importance in, in science. Uh, these are kind of like established use cases for it. So in, in the field of archaeology, digital elevation models, where you're allowing you to see archaeological structures. Um, then more in terms of, of, let's say, city planning. This is this is part of the Netherlands, as shown by the, the Dutch um, the Dutch uh, height cartography uh, AHN, but also um, ecosystems. So this is a part of a forest in California. But in general, these have always been small contexts. Overall, when you want to use point clouds, however, what you need to do is to extract information from them. The human eye is great at this. I mean, I look at this picture and I see a bunch of trees, and I'm sure you do as well. But if you want to characterize an environment or gain any kind of information from that, what you need to do is extract quantifiable properties from it. That means what you're basically talking about is grouping points and calculating metrics over them to inform your, your, your processes and, and your, your algorithms. And these can range from something like height classification or the horizontal variability. Um, basically, it depends on the question you want to ask, so you need to be able to construct your own features. Now that's all fine and well as long as you have a small piece of, uh, of area that you're looking at, but modern data sets actually cover entire countries at high resolution or, and we're moving to continental scales. So that means that you're in a situation where you can have terabytes of high resolution data that you need to process. So your software to do this needs to scale. For example, the, the Dutch HN3 um, has five terabytes of compressed data, uncompressed it's 50 terabytes, it's hundreds of, million, hundred, yeah, it's hundreds of millions of points, uh, scaling up to billions of points, so that's, yeah, you need to be able to process that kind of volume. And as I mentioned, the scientific use cases require a high degree of customizability, so you need to be able to, to adapt your software to the problem that you want to, want to answer. Um, combined, open science, science also requires reproducibility, so you don't want to be locked into software solutions that only some research group may have, may have available. And you want researchers to be able to use this coming from their, their custom workflows. So you need a low entry barrier. And that's why we then decided to make the laser chicken point cloud processing library um, to basically enable all of these points. Now, a quick, a quick statement about why we're talking only about the laser chicken library at the moment. Obviously, if you want to do processing at scale, then you need to also take the entire scale component into account. So this is, let's say an example, you have LiDAR data covering the Netherlands, but you basically want to characterize the environment at the resolution of these little um, rectangles here based on the, the LiDAR points that, that are in this rectangle. But the, um, the question of processing points is disjoint from the question of what you want to use the process points for. So what we decided to do in the context of the process is to separate the framework that you need to, to do scaling from the tools that you need to do the actual processing of the points. So by, by increasing modularity of your software, you're enhancing the, the ability of others to reuse your software for their own purposes. So in, in the following, we'll, we'll be talking about Laser Chicken, but you can also talk to me about Laser Farm if you want. There's also quite a lot of interesting software in there. Um, so what does Laser Chicken offer you? Basically, it, it, the, the workflow is depicted at the bottom, and it, it introduces a novel concept, and that is that you have a target point cloud. Instead of defining 
strictly defining a rasterization or something. What you can do is say, I want to understand the structure of point clouds around a given point of my choice in a given volume of my choice. So Laser Chicken provides you the capability of defining such a target point cloud, defining target volumes around them, and then calculating user-defined or pre-implemented metrics for all of these. And it has optimized um, space partitioning structures based on CKD trees to, to, do, um, to, to compute neighborhoods and, and subsets of points. Um, but what this basically gives you is the ability to do everything from raster voxel-based processing all the way down to single point-based processing. Um, and the implementation here is simply as a, as a vectorized single uh, process Python library. Um, and you can arbitrarily scale this by uh, exploiting spatial parallelism and farming out your jobs in, um, in parallel using different subsets of your data that are, that are chunked in, in space. Um, so, yeah, sorry, so as I showed you here, this is basically a small example of how you would do rasterization. You have a regular grid of target points and then you have infinite cylinders above them and that gives you a raster processing. But this is an example of point processing. So basically every one of these little circles is, um, is a target point. It has a, a volume of uh, half a meter around it and then it, it's computing the orientation or the, the normal of the point cloud that lies within this volume. So this, can, this allows you to do plane detection, and which is the basis of object detection. So in this context, laser chicken is a step in a processing chain where you calculate, calculate these normals and then do a clustering or, or an extraction approach on the features that you have been able to, to extract. So, so much for the library and for the choices behind this modularity and, and, um, and use. Uh, we've used it in the context of the project basically to, to define um, fine scale habitat and, uh, and look at, at wetland bird um, species distribution. So um, what I'm showing you here is at the, at the top you would have uh, what you had until now, which is basically a land cover type. But at the, at the bottom, um, you have the combined metrics of uh, the, this habitat structure that you can derive with this type of approach. And it allows you to differentiate between the, the, the habitats of, of different species, so to, to model their occurrence. Um, Laser Chicken is also in further community use. Um, it's now incorporated in the, the Mamba, uh, MAMBO project, uh, which is a European Union project looking into uh, monitoring biodiversity, uh, also one of the United Nations sustainability goals. Um, and it's also um, uh, an integral part of the LifeWatch ERIC, European Research uh, Infrastructure, uh, where it's one of the prototypes for virtual research environments and virtual labs for, um, for green life sciences research. So it's, it's, um, it's quite nice to see both direct scientific use as well as the adoption of these types of tools into larger projects moving towards, towards the future. And that also kind of then comes to the point of community and for the development of the software. Um, we, we have the software living in a repository. Um, the, the URL is below. Basically, community engagement is, is primarily possible via, via GitHub and the, the issues tracker and, and pull request system. We currently have 11 forks active um, of people who have forked the software and are using it for their own purposes and for the developing it. But it also, um, it also highlights your, your issues. If you're working in a project-based fashion, then when a project ends, the resources dry up. And that's why you need community. That's why you need engagement if the software is supposed to live on. Um, and that's why this, this is a nice example of where that step has been made and it has been adopted in, in other further continuing projects. And there's accordingly a real chance of, of um, continued support of the software. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. And uh, thank you for your attention. Any, any questions? Thank you very much for your presentation. Sure. So are there any questions from the, from the audience? JC is gone. Yeah, uh, I have actually, I have two questions for you. 
The first one, I wonder whether uh, your, your structural idea, so this uh, basically uh, creating a, a work pieces uh, came uh, as the original project idea or this was something you developed uh, together uh, in collaboration with the, with the University of Amsterdam during the project you, cycle? You mean the, uh, the target point cloud or the, the spatial discretization that allows you to scale? Um, so there's, 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 there's two things. There's one where you basically say, okay, I want to look at, I want to be able to define my, my environment or the, 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 basically the rasterization scheme that I want to use if I'm going to do rasterized processing or point processing is the other, is the other um, option. Um, and then there's the question of if you have a very large data set, how do you make it, how do you make it manageable to, to process that in, in a feasible amount of time, which is basically this, this spatial parallelism. Um, and there, um, uh, fairly early in the project, we were basically confronted with, with the, the nature of, of the questions being asked, but also the nature of the data itself as um, very large extent, but the questions that you're asking of it are fairly local. That, that basically immediately tells you that the, pro that the problem can be spatially discretized in this fashion, because if you're not looking at actions over large areas, if the correlation length of the, the process you're looking at is, is relatively small, then you can, you can chunk your problem to the correlation length, or maybe to two correlation lengths if you want to be on the safe side. But yeah, so, you, so basically thinking about the, the structure of the, the problem you want to, and the processes that are involved in the problem you want to investigate motivates how you decide to, to go about your problem. But LiDAR, point clouds in general have this property of um, being focused on local effects but being large in scale, which is why spatial parallelism is a, is a good solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And the, the second question, uh, basically you showed this continuation uh, projects or let's say uh, external projects which are using in fact yeah. your, your, your project outcomes. Are there any kind of uh, direct um, um, support uh, from those projects so they are just users and they just contribute like uh, there are some bug fixes or they request some uh, additional features or they, they actively also uh, support your further development effort so um, we, we've had both so there, there are some that basically are just simply a fully external community uh, Momo is, is currently that um, but the, the LifeWatch side uh, we actually from that project we received funding to uh, do some further implementation and uh, well, obviously aimed at the, the questions that they had raised um, in the use of the software. But yeah, that, that's a way of then also continuing support from our side on, on it if, if funding becomes available via collaboration. Then that works. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks again for your presentation.